what I like is there's all these concentric circles of events that are occurring, and it finally answers the question that I think any rational human being, uh, you know, it begs the question, why doesn't anybody bug out on these Avengers when they, they lay waste to these places while they're saving the world? And I thought, uh, well, cool, it's about time. But then it creates all these new, this new problem set that needs to be addressed. I read uh, the Extremis uh, series, and I was thinking about that from Iron Man 1 through Iron Man 3. Um, the Avenger stuff was always really kind of this colossal ambitious thing, but to me, the Civil War was the kind of, it was the smart, sexy Marvel idea, you know, um, about really having a, a rift between two characters that you kind of, you don't, I don't know, you, you don't want to see them, you want to see them, you know, some friction, but you don't want to see this tear in the fabric of the relationships because you know how pervasive it could be. There's nothing I don't like about them as directors. Um, a, there's just kind of a simpatico with the way that I like to influence things and then step back and really follow their lead. It's just this kind of dance, this creative dance you want to have. And the other thing is it's not like, you know, Anthony's in charge of talent and Joe takes care of all the technical stuff. I mean, they're, they're like, you know, they're both, there's a lot of alacrity and they're both really versatile individually. I think people are really going to be pleasantly surprised and intrigued by the journey of the choices that Cap makes and the fact that you kind of stay with them. It's familiar and easy to kind of go on, on the Tony serendipitous hero side. We're always going to mess a bunch of things up, but his heart's in the right place. And, and you kind of wonder, like, where is Cap's heart right now?